Another tool we have to describe data graphically is something called a box plot. The box plot uses a five number summary to summarize and then graph data. The five number summary consists of five numbers that help us to describe the data. These are the smallest value, the first quartile, Q1, the median, Q2, the third quartile, Q3, and the largest value. To illustrate this, let's use a set of data with 15 student grades. We used this data in a previous tutorial to demonstrate the percentiles and quartiles. Here are the 15 student grades, 69, 98, 82, 77, and so on. The first number we need for the five number summary is the smallest value. If you recall from the tutorial on percentiles and quartiles, in order to determine Q1, Q2, and Q3, you first have to put this data in an ordered array. Once you put the data in order from smallest to largest, it's easy to see that the smallest value is 55, and the largest value is 98. We calculated Q1 as 69, Q2 the median as 77, and Q3 as 84. If you don't remember how to calculate Q1, Q2, and Q3, please review my tutorial on percentiles and quartiles. So now we have our five number summary. The smallest value is 55. The first quartile Q1 is 69. The median is 77. The third quartile is 84. And the largest value is 98. Now we can create a box plot from this five number summary. The first step is to draw a box with the ends of the box at Q1 and Q3, so that would be 69 and 84. Here you see a box with the left end of the box at 69 and the right end of the box at 84. The next step is to draw a line down the part of the box above the median. Here you can see I drew a line at 77, which is the median for this set of data. Next we draw the whiskers. These are drawn out from the box to the left to the smallest value and to the right to the largest value. So on the left, this would be a whisker out to 55 since that's the smallest number. And on the right, that would be out to 98 since that would be the largest value. And those are called the whiskers. So now you know why a box plot is sometimes called a box and whiskers plot. We may also want to calculate the upper limit and lower limit to the data set so we know where most of the data lie. Any data outside of the upper and lower limits will be considered outliers. These may just be extreme values, or they may be values that were not recorded properly, meaning mistakes. To determine the upper and lower limits, first we have to calculate what's called the interquartile range. The interquartile range is Q3 minus Q1, which is 84 minus 69, which is 15. Step two is then to multiply the IRQ by 1.5. 15 times 1.5 is 22.5. The lower limit is then the number from step two minus Q1. So we take 22.5 minus 69 and we get 46.5. So 46.5 is the lower limit. To get the upper limit, we take the number in step two, 22.5, and add Q3, 84, and we get 84 plus 22.5, or 106.5. So 106.5 is the upper limit. The lines on the right and left side of the box plot indicate the upper and lower limits of the data set just for illustration purposes but those lines are not normally shown on a box plot. Just the box and the whiskers are typically shown. The upper and lower limits are useful for detecting outliers. So for example, if someone gets a grade of 108, then we would wonder if that was a recording error or if someone actually did get 108. There is a lot of information that can be interpreted from a box and whiskers plot. And as you know, we like to say a picture is worth a thousand words. And a box plot is certainly worth a lot of words. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on box plots and I hope you learned something.